There we go. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. How are you doing today, guys? Hello, it is. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Jocelyn. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, Byron. Vamos a ver. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Jocelyn. How are you? Fine, and you, teacher? Very good. Okay, good evening, ready. teacher. Good evening, Byron. How are you doing today, sir? How is your day going? Welcome. Good evening, Sofía. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? Good evening, teacher. I'm fine. And you? Very good. Okay, I'm doing I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for asking. I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Good evening, Jacqueline. Good evening, teacher. Hola, Can ¿qué tal? <laughs> no, that's fine. No worries. Fine, fine, <laughs> fine, teacher. Very good. Very and, good. And, uh, and, uh, about you. I'm doing okay. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you, Jacqueline. I hope that you guys had, I hope that you guys had a wonderful weekend. I hope that you guys enjoyed, that you had the chance to get some rest. So hopefully you guys had a good time during the weekend. Espero ahí que se lo hayan pasado bien. A ver, cuéntenme, ¿qué hicieron el fin de semana? Vamos a ver. What did you guys do on the weekend? My weekend was very good. A uh, good time to rest. Um, enjoy with my family. All right, very Enjoyed good. Teacher? Very good, Iris. Well, I had basically the same. I spent some time with my family. I traveled to uh, San Luis Talpa in La Paz. Uh, so I traveled, I went out, I went uh, to the mall. So I did a couple of things. It was a good weekend. I did a lot of things, so I'm tired. That's the only thing. <laughs> I'm really tired at this time. Uh oh. But I'm really happy to hear that you had a good time with your family. It is very good. What about the rest? What did you guys do on the weekend? Did you do something exciting? Something that you want to share? Did you go to church maybe? A lot of people go to church on, on the weekend, uh, especially on Sunday. Many times, especially, I mean, if you are a Catholic, uh, people go to church on Sunday, right? So I don't know about you guys. Do you, do you go to church? Vamos a ver. A ver qué nos pueden contar por aquí, qué es lo que han hecho. Vamos a ver. Patricia, Verónica, ¿qué hizo usted el fin de semana? Vamos a ver. Good evening, teacher. Um, uh, only watching... Uh, soccer i see okay very good i yes, like it i see I like it. <laughs> very good i i did basically the same thing i didn't have as much time as i wanted but i watched a couple of of games i watched the uh, alemania contra españa uh, i really yes. wanted to i really wanted to watch that game because i think that they are like uh like the like the strongest teams in the competition so i, I think that they are really good I really like the game. Did you did you watch it? Yes. Yes, you did. Okay, very yes, good. Yes, <laughs> and did you like it? Um. Yes, I like it. Okay, very good. Do you have a favorite team, Patricia? Um, uh, Brazil. Brazil. Okay, I see. Okay. España. <laughs> and Spain too. Yes. <laughs> very good. Okay. 
Muy bien, vamos a ver aquí, ¿alguien más que sea fanático del fútbol? ¿Alguien más que le haya visto algún partido? Vamos a ver qué nos pueden contar. I watch Spain versus Germany. So... Yes, ok, very good. Very good, Byron. Uh, and do you have a favorite team? Like, maybe, uh, do you like Spain or do you like Brazil, like Patricia? I like Brazil. I think. Okay, very good. I think that Brazil has a very good team, too. They have really good players. Like, well, uh, Neymar, Vinicius, they are really good. They have a good team. But I think that Neymar is injured. It seems like he had like an injury on his ankle. But well, anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed. And what did you, uh, you like football just like me? I hope that you guys had the opportunity uh, to watch the games because they were really exciting. Okay, guys, well, um, Thank you so much for coming, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being here one more time. So today we are going to start the third week, okay? We just have uh, classes uh, for this week. And then next week is going to be the final week for this level, okay? For intermediate module one. And after that, you guys are going to be done with this, okay? So I hope you guys had a good time. Uh, last week, we were talking about uh, different things. We were talking about uh, used to, and we also talked about uh, comparison, evaluations with nouns and with adjectives. And we also, uh, we also learned how to express wishes, right? Like wishes about something that we wished that was uh, different in the present time, okay? Uh, so do you guys remember about that? Can anybody give me an example about how to express wishes about something in the present? Vamos a ver, alguien que me diga por ahí, para recordar nada más lo que vimos la semana pasada. ¿Cómo decíamos eh, nuestros deseos acerca de algo en el presente? Por ejemplo, tenemos una situación, ¿verdad? Como decíamos, eh, yo vivo con mis padres, pero yo desearía que no fuera así. Vamos a ver. I wish. Uh -huh. I wish. Eh, bueno, yo tengo un ejemplo uh -huh. que es I wish my family had more children. Ok. Desearía que mi familia tuviera más niños. Ok. Very good. And me, teacher, and me, I wish I knew how to play the piano. Very good. Thank you, Iris. Thank you, and Yeah, very good. Thank you, Monica, too. Okay, uh, Alicia? I wish have a lot of money. I wish I had a lot of money, okay? I wish I had. Bueno, ¿y qué pasaba? Muchas gracias, Alicia. Muy buen ejemplo. Vamos ahora con Patricia. Vamos a ver. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Patricia, can you hear me? Hola. Yes, okay, uh, Patricia, we can we cannot hear you at this time. Okay, okay, thank you, Patricia, thank you. Uh, so I, yeah, okay, very good. So you said that you wish you had your own apartment. That's what you said, right? Very good. Okay, very good, guys. Uh, so what happens when we have a, a third person, like he or she? ¿Qué pasa cuando tenemos he or she? ¿Cómo es en ese caso? Vamos a ver. ¿Qué decíamos que pasaba cuando teníamos he or she? Ahí cambiaba, ¿verdad? Entonces lo hacíamos de una forma diferente. She wishes, si no me equivoco. That is correct. Very good. Very good, Monica. So, yes, in that case. She we wishes. Very good, Byron. Thank you. That is correct. So, if we have a third person like he or she, then we are going to change it. We're going to say it 
like she wishes or he wishes. And then uh, the rest is going to remain the same, okay? Very good. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate that. All right, guys. So for today, we are going to we're going to learn something new. We're going to work on a new topic for today, okay? So let me share the presentation with you guys. Vamos a ver por acá. De acuerdo, guys. Entonces, para el día de ahora, vamos a empezar con un nuevo tema. Eh, es siempre relacionado, eh, vamos a ver un poco de gramática, vamos a escuchar por allí algún programa de audio, solamente para que podamos eh, tener la teoría, digamos, antes. Y luego de eso, pues vamos a tener un tiempo para practicar, como siempre, ¿de acuerdo? Así que les voy a compartir por acá la presentación. Vamos a ver. There we go. Okay, very good, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming, guys. So our topic for today, it is the present perfect, okay? So uh, we have two objectives for today, for the lesson. And the objectives are these, okay? So we are going to practice asking questions in the present, in the present perfect, using have you ever, and describing your past experiences by responding in both the present perfect and simple past, okay? So basically, guys, uh, when it comes to the present perfect, and when we ask questions using the present perfect, usually, we answer to those questions using the present perfect and also the simple past. So we are going to learn both the present perfect and the simple past, okay? Uh, you guys probably, uh, you may be familiar with the topic. So we are going to just, uh, we're going to review, we're going to go over the information uh, just in case, okay? So then objective number two. So we well that this is something that we are going to learn uh later uh during this week so we are going to learn about sequence adverbs okay but that is going to be um maybe in about uh two days okay it's not going to be for today it's going to be in about uh two or three days así que vamos a continuar entonces por acá guys eh, para esta semana nosotros eh, creo que ya se los compartieron por ahí nosotros tenemos que completar la sección cuatro de acuerdo, para el jueves, creo que les estaban mencionando que teníamos que completar aproximadamente el 80%, ya para el día jueves, antes de la clase, creo. Así que vamos a intentar eh, tener ya la información lista para ese día. De acuerdo, entonces vamos a empezar con el tema que es el presente perfecto. Eh, les voy a dar solamente esta definición eh, para que nos ayude a ponernos en contexto de qué es lo que es, ¿verdad? All right, guys, so when it comes to the present perfect, eh, it is something that we use when we want to talk about an action when time it is not important, okay? Or when time is not specified or the action has not really finished happening. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, when it comes to the situations, uh, we can say things that happen in the past. And when it comes to the present perfect, it is something that started at some point in the past, but we are not saying exactly when it happened because that is not important to us. And also, it may be something that is still going on, okay? So we have uh, examples like this. So we have, I have worked hard today. So this is uh, one example for the present perfect, okay? So we are saying that I started working earlier today, something in the past, and it's still going on to this point, okay? That is the difference between the present perfect and the simple past, okay? We have another example here. It says, I have learned a lot of new English vocabulary, okay? so. Uh, this is something that started in the past. We don't know exactly when it happened. Uh, that is one of the uh, keys uh, to this topic, okay? So it's something that it, it doesn't matter exactly when it happened. Okay. 
Bueno, entonces en este caso, eh, guys, eh, solamente para eh, como respaldar eh, a esto, eh, el presente perfecto lo utilizamos nosotros para situaciones donde el tiempo no, es, es, no está especificado, ¿de acuerdo? Y también para cosas que empezaron en el pasado y que todavía puede que tengan una conexión con el presente. Puede que todavía no hayan terminado. Y estos son algunos ejemplos que ten, como los que tenemos acá. Eh, para nosotros formar eh, la estructura del presente perfecto, nosotros utilizamos el verbo auxiliar have, ¿ok? Y esto lo vamos a, eh, vamos a ajustar de acuerdo al tipo de sujeto que estemos utilizando. Si nosotros tenemos eh, una tercera persona, como es he, she o it, en ese caso nosotros utilizamos has, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, eh, por acá ya vamos a ver. Se lo, voy a se lo voy a poner por acá. Entonces acá tenemos have y has. ¿Ok? Entonces nosotros vamos a utilizar have con I, you, we y they. ¿Ok? So I have, you have, we have, they have. Y nosotros vamos a utilizar has con las terceras personas como son he, she, and it. Así que eso es lo que nosotros principalmente tenemos que tener en mente. ¿De acuerdo? Vamos a formarlo eh, a partir de siempre un sujeto, luego nuestro verbo auxiliar, que va a depender de esto de acá. De qué, eh, de qué persona estamos hablando, ¿de acuerdo? Si es una tercera persona, utilizamos has, y si es una eh, las otras opciones como I, you, we and they, we are going to use have instead, ok eh, entonces vamos a ver por acá vamos a ver algo antes de que entremos más como en la estructura, vamos a ver algo por acá perdón sí, perdón Joel, quería decir usted algo I'm sorry teacher ok, that's fine, no worries no worries, Joel, that's fine. Bueno, entonces, como les estaba mencionando, acá tenemos eh, esta estructura, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces la vamos a, se la voy a explicar antes de que veamos eh, lo que les quería mostrar. Entonces, el sujeto, luego nosotros utilizamos el verbo auxiliar y a continuación va un verbo en la forma del pasado participio, ¿de acuerdo? Nosotros tenemos... Eh, tenemos tres opciones cuando se trata del verbo. Tenemos la forma base o la forma en presente. Luego nosotros tenemos la forma del pasado simple. Y en último lugar tenemos el pasado participio. Perdón, entonces eh, permítame un instante, guys, que creo que eh, tengo que hacer unos ajustes acá. Permítame un momento nada más. Creo que era esta. Vamos a ver. Se me han mezclado por acá esto. Creo que esta sería. Vamos a ver. Bueno, esta es. Ok, ahí estamos. Perdón, esta sería la presentación. De acuerdo. Entonces, guys, eh, lo que les estaba mencionando. Acá tenemos nosotros, eh, con respecto al verbo, tenemos la forma base... Tenemos el pasado simple y tenemos el pasado participio, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, para muchos verbos, el pasado participio solamente eh, se le agrega la letra E y la D al final, para la mayoría. Pero nosotros, eh, como ya saben ustedes, tenemos verbos irregulares, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, para los verbos irregulares, eh, ahí sí tenemos que aprendernos cómo es que eh, se tienen que conjugar, ¿ok? Eh, tenemos estos ejemplos acá. Por ejemplo, para B, uh, so we have for B, we have the base form is B in the present time. Then we have the simple past, and that would be was and were, okay? Was and were. Okay, what happens if we want to change it into the past participle form? In that case, we need to change it to been, okay? So I have been, or she has been. Okay. 
en caso de que sea eh, tercera persona, lo cambiamos de esta forma, lo que les estaba mencionando anteriormente. O oh, it can be, he has been. Ok, entonces esta es la forma del pasado participio. Eh, en el caso de come, el pasado participio también es come, no, no cambia. Solamente para el pasado simple. Uh, then we have do, the simple past is did, and then the past participle it is done. So, I have done. Y así, esta es la, eh, en este caso para estos verbos, eh, nosotros tenemos que recordarlo, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, entonces vamos aquí, vamos a ir atrás. Eh, tenemos algunos ejemplos adicionales. Eh, de estas son oraciones en las cuales lo hemos conjugado de una forma que sea una oración del tipo positiva. Entonces, eh, ¿cuál es la estructura? Eh, la estructura es, uh, we have the subject, then we have the verb, have or has, in this case, then we have the verb in the past participle form. And after that, we are going to add a complement, okay? So, like, Elvis has met his new teacher, okay? So, bueno, acá sería he has met her new teacher, okay? En este caso, eh, estamos diciendo que Elvis ya ha conocido a su nueva, a su, nue su nuevo profesor. Aquí vamos a cambiar lo que, lo, de acuerdo, ahí está. Entonces, esto equivale a decir que él ya ha conocido sí, a su sí. nueva, perdón. Sí. ¿En qué página está? Porque yo sigo viendo la de Present Perfect, donde dice I have worked. Hard today, nada más, no sé si ya la está pasando. Ok, sí, muchas gracias, muchas gracias, Iris. Creo que no lo cambié acá. Muchas gracias por recordarme. Perdón, guys. Bueno, lo lamento mucho, guys. A veces se me. Tengo algunas presentaciones acá que se me mezclan un poco. Perdón, aquí está. Bueno, entonces, eh, antes les estaba mostrando este cuadro que era de los verbos, ¿verdad? Y los verbos teníamos, como les estaba mencionando, eh, las tres formas, ¿verdad? Tenemos la forma base, el pasado simple y el pasado participio. Entonces, eh, en el caso de los verbos irregulares, tenemos que aprendérnoslo, ¿verdad? Y en el caso de los verbos, eh, la mayoría de los verbos solamente agregamos la letra ED al final, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, eso les estaba explicando con respecto a esta, ta a esta tabla. Y acá tenemos la conjugación, que sería... Si es una tercera persona, es he has been or she has come. ¿Ok? Entonces, eh, por acá tenía algunos ejemplos más acerca de oraciones. En este caso, una oración afirmativa utilizando el presente perfecto. Entonces, eh, ¿cómo funciona? Tenemos el sujeto, tenemos el verbo auxiliar, que es have or has. And it depends on the subject. Like in this case, we are talking about uh, Elvis, which is uh, he. So uh, that is the reason why we are using has. Okay, Elvis has. And then uh, the verb is going to be in the past participle form. Okay, like Elvis has met his new teacher. Okay, and that is the same uh, if we say he has, we're talking about Elvis in this case. So we're talking about him. De acuerdo, entonces, eh, este es un ejemplo de una oración del tipo afirmativa. De acuerdo, la estructura está bien fácil. Solamente tenemos que recordar sujeto, verbo auxiliar y el verbo en la forma participio. De acuerdo. Eh, luego, ¿qué pasa si nosotros queremos hacer una pregunta? Eh, si nosotros queremos hacer una pregunta, eh, simplemente cambiamos el orden, como en la mayoría de, de las preguntas en la mayoría de los tiempos. Eh, nosotros colocamos el verbo auxiliar antes del sujeto. Entonces sería, has Elvis met his new teacher? Or has Elvis or met his new teacher? Or has he met his new teacher yet? Eh, esta sería una pregunta del tipo yes or no, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, entonces la respuesta sería uh, yes, he has. O si queremos decir que no, 
Nosotros diríamos no. No, he, he hasn't. Hasn't. That is correct. Very good. Acá, ¿verdad? Sería no, he hasn't. De esta forma. Y esa sería eh, la forma en la que nosotros contestamos este tipo de preguntas. Eh, que son del tipo yes or no. Recuerden que siempre vamos a contestar utilizando el mismo tiempo del verbo. Acá tenemos el presente perfecto. Y por esa razón nosotros contestamos utilizando el presente perfecto también. ¿Ok? Ahora, ¿qué pasa si no es una tercera persona? En ese caso nosotros eh, vamos a utilizar eh, have, ¿verdad? Entonces sería, they have called you multiple times with no response. ¿Ok? Tenemos el sujeto, they. Then we have the auxiliary verb, which is have in this case. So, they have called you multiple times with no response. Esa sería eh, la estructura en este caso. Eh, bueno, acá está contractado. Y eso es una cosa que les quería eh, mostrar por acá. Cuando se trata de las contracciones, eh, lo vamos a hacer de la siguiente forma. Vamos a ver por acá. Ok, eh, déjenme, por acá se lo voy a anotar mejor. Creo que no lo tengo. Vamos a ver, eh, si es por ejemplo para I have. Nosotros lo contractamos de esta forma, sería I've. Ok, y la pronunciación sería como con vibración y eh, haciendo el sonido de la letra V al final. So, I've been, I've been. To Mexico. I've been. Okay. I've. At the end, there is like a B sound at the end. Eso es para el caso de I have. Okay. So I've. ¿Qué pasa si, por ejemplo, hacemos una contracción para una tercera persona como she o he? En ese caso, eh, si queremos decir she has, nosotros podemos decir también she's been to Mexico. Okay, she's. And the contraction, as you can see, it is the same contraction that we use when we say uh, she is a doctor. Uh, nosotros eh, lo contractamos como she's a doctor. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces es el mismo tipo de contracción, si ustedes se fijan. Uh, she, apostrophus, S. ¿Ok? Es the same thing. Eh, ¿Cómo vamos a saber nosotros cuál es la diferencia? Pues en este caso nos lo va a decir el verbo. ¿Verdad? Acá tenemos el verbo en pasado participio. Entonces aquí sabemos que estamos hablando del presente perfecto. ¿De acuerdo? Y en este caso, si ustedes se fijan, estamos hablando eh, simplemente del el presente simple. ¿Ok? Estamos diciendo ella es. Estamos hablando del verbo to be, ser o estar. Entonces, es diferente esto de esto de acá. Se escribe de la misma forma, se pronuncia igual, pero eh, es un contexto diferente. ¿Ok? Eh, ¿Qué pasa si nosotros queremos contractar de igual forma he has? So, in that case, we say his. ¿Ok? So, he's been waiting for you. All morning. Okay, él ha estado esperando por ti eh, toda la mañana. La misma, el mismo tipo de, de contracción, ¿de acuerdo? Es igual. Eh, ¿Qué pasa? Ahora vamos a ver, eh, por ejemplo, con you o they. En ese caso, nosotros eh, solamente colocamos el, el pronombre como you y luego el apóstrofe y la letra V y la E. So, you. Ok, en ese caso hay como un sonido, de, siempre es el sonido como de la letra V al final. So, you've been studying. Ok, bueno, acá era así. Sería, you've been studying. Ok, por ejemplo. 
Estos son solo algunos ejemplos, guys. Pueden haber muchos más, ¿de acuerdo? Pero solamente es como para ilustrar y para mencionarles eh, cómo es la pronunciación y la forma en la que se hace la contracción para este tipo de oraciones, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, you hay como un pequeño sonido de la B. Las contracciones, guys, se utilizan principalmente para el lenguaje hablado. Eh, creo que ustedes ya lo saben. Eh, más que todo es para hablar, para entornos un poco más, como, digamos, en algunos casos un poco más eh, familiares, no tan, no tan formal, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, ya si es un documento más formal, pues ya tendría que ir quizás sin contracciones, ¿de acuerdo? Pero para... A la hora de hablar, pues por lo general la gente hace muchas contracciones. Es para ahorrar tiempo y para hacerlo más rápido. Entonces, eso sería como las contracciones de la forma eh, más común, ¿de acuerdo? No sé si nos queda claro esta parte o si tienen una pregunta acerca de esto. Ok, guys. So, if you don't have any questions, then uh, there is something that, that I wanted to show you. Eh, let me see. Bueno, es, les voy a mostrar por aquí algo. Vamos a escuchar este pequeño video. Eh, vamos a ver, les voy a compartir esta vez. Eh, sí, me voy a asegurar que lo compartamos con todo y el audio para que ustedes lo puedan escuchar. Y por acá vamos a escuchar a este. Es un pequeño, una pequeña conversación al principio. Uh, so we have a conversation between uh, two people. They are talking about something, about experiences that they had in the past, okay? So we're going to listen to that. And after that, we're going to listen to uh, the explanation that we have for the simple past and also for the present perfect. So we're going to listen to the conversation first. And after that, we are going to discuss the information about the The, the, the topic, ok así que permítanme un instante guys, solamente voy a asegurarme que lo puedan ver bien ahí está, bueno lo vamos a escuchar y luego vamos a discutir sobre esto, de acuerdo before I present the structure that we'll learn in this class I would like for you to listen to an audio program this audio program illustrates how this topic is used Your task is to listen carefully as I'll ask you questions about the audio program at the end. Hey, this sounds strange. Snails with garlic. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. I had them here just last week. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They were delicious. Why don't you try some? No, I don't think so. Have you decided on an appetizer yet? Yes. I'll have a small order of the snails, please. And you, sir? I think I'll have the fried brains. Fried brains? I've never heard of that. It sounds scary. Let me present the structure now. I would like to start by presenting this concept to you. The first thing is that we use the simple past for completed events at a definite time in the past. In other words, things that you did and have completed. And we use the present perfect for events within a time period up to the present time. In other words, events that you started in the past and those have continued to the present and they're not complete yet. Now, what we're going to learn in today's lesson is how the two are related. First of all, I may ask you a question, such as the one that you see on the example. Have you ever eaten snails? And your answer may be, yes, I have. And when you continue to give more information about your answer, you're going to use the simple past. And you're not going to use the present perfect to continue on given more information because typically what you want to do is you want to express an experience that you had last week about that particular question, right? Such as the example that we see there. Yes, I have. I tried them last month. And I want you to notice the question towards the bottom. It's no longer in the present perfect, but it is now in the simple past. And that's because we're asking questions about our um, past experience. We're no longer asking questions about 
um, if you've ever eaten snails. Now the question is related to uh, the example that you see there. I tried him last month. And the next questions will be related to that event. And so the answer to that is, yes, I did. And then you give more information. They were delicious. And so we do the same thing uh, towards the left, towards, towards the right side of the example of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? We start off the question using the present perfect. And then you continue on and, and you give either a positive or a negative answer. And then in this case, it happens to be a negative answer. No, I haven't. Um, and then you might give more information, but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night, right? Um, and then the next questions that are followed here are in the simple past. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends. Continue on and... and you... <clears throat> All right, guys. So here, uh, as you can see, we have the simple past and also the present perfect, okay? So, like he was saying, when it comes to this, the present perfect, that is something that we use to talk about uh sometimes about experiences something that started in the past and is still connected to the present time okay like in this case we have a question here okay we have this structure that i explained to you just a moment ago so have you so we have have we have the subject and then we have the verb in this past participle form okay and we are using ever, uh, and this is something that we use, so we can talk about, uh, so we can ask if this person has done uh, this situation, like in this case, if this person has eaten snails at least once in his or her life, okay? Entonces, eh, acá, guys, eh, tenemos una pregunta, estamos utilizando la estructura que les mencioné, si ustedes ven, have you, ¿ok? Luego, nosotros utilizamos ever. Ever es como para decir si alguna vez, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, ¿Y qué pasa con el presente perfecto? El presente perfecto nosotros lo pudiéramos traducir directamente al español como cuando nosotros decimos eh, yo he hecho, eh, yo he comido, ella ha comido, o yo he viajado a este país, ellos han viajado a este país, es exactamente lo mismo, entonces acá eh, cuando nosotros formamos esta oración nosotros estamos preguntando eh, ¿has alguna vez comido eh, en este caso caracoles? y lo que nos estaba mencionando en el, en el video eh, es que nosotros vamos a contestar utilizando el presente perfecto como en este caso, es una yes, no questions so yes, I have or no, I haven't ok so we're going to answer using yes, I have or no, I haven't y qué pasa después de eso si nosotros queremos agregar más información eh, nosotros ya lo haríamos utilizando el pasado simple ok y cómo es el pasado simple el pasado simple es para hablar acerca de cosas eh, que sucedieron en el pasado y que finalizaron, ¿ok? So, we use the simple past for something that started in the past and also it ended in the past. Eh, what is the structure? When it comes to the simple past, we are going to use the subject and then we are going to use the verb in the simple past. So, I tried them last month, ¿ok? Yes, I have. I tried them last month. Así va el, como en este caso, el orden de la conversación, ¿de acuerdo? Primero estamos con el presente perfecto, luego pasamos al pasado, y luego lo que viene a continuación de esa respuesta eh, va a ser también en el pasado, ¿de acuerdo? Si ustedes se fijan, I tried them last month. We have the simple past. And then we are also going to ask about that using the simple past. So, since you said that you tried them last month, did you like them? Okay? ¿Cómo hacemos nosotros la pregunta utilizando el pasado simple? 
En ese caso, nosotros vamos a utilizar el auxiliar did, ¿ok? Así como lo estábamos haciendo eh, anteriormente cuando hacíamos las preguntas acerca de used to. We said, did you used to go to the mall when you were a child? Uh, did you used to go to a school uh, during the morning? Uh, things like that, okay? So we're going to use the auxiliary did. So did plus the subject plus the verb in the base form, like in this case. Did you like them? Did you eat at a Thai restaurant or something like that, okay? That would be another example. Uh, and then the answer is going to be using the simple past too, okay? Yes, I did. Did you like them? Yes, I did. Or no, I didn't, okay? We need to remember that. And it says, yes, I did. They were delicious. They were delicious. Okay, estamos utilizando, si ustedes se fijan, el pasado simple en este caso. Okay, entonces, eh, el pasado simple es bien fácil. Solamente es el sujeto, el verbo en pasado, eh, para oraciones del tipo afirmativo. Y cuando sean oraciones negativas o de tipo de preguntas, nosotros vamos a utilizar el auxiliar did, ok? So, did you like them? Or, I didn't try, I didn't try them last month. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, eso les quería explicar, guys, que acá, ese es como el, el orden que va a llevar la conversación. Primero, el presente perfecto, luego nos cambiamos al pasado simple, y la conversación continuaría eh, el resto de la conversación utilizando el pasado simple, ok? All right, so we're going to continue uh, with the with the video, guys. Uh, do you have any questions at this point about this? Bueno, si no tenemos preguntas, vamos a continuar. Y más adelante, guys, vamos a tener tiempo para practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Yo siempre eh, quiero que ustedes practiquen. Y como siempre, eh, yo estoy ahí con ustedes por si tienen alguna duda. Y yo puedo ayudarles con eso, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, vamos a seguir. Give either a positive or a negative. Uh, we should learn the following concept that we're going to use. Now that we understand the concept on how this topic is used, what I would like to do now is I would like to explain how to form questions using the present perfect. And, um, and so let me do that at this time. First of all, uh, we should learn the following concept that we're going to use have. Have it's an auxiliary verb. And we're going to use have whenever I talk about the pronouns I, you, we, and they. And then I will use has whenever I talk about the pronouns he, she, or it, or in other words, the third person, right? Um, and um, so having said this, what I would like to do now is I would like to present the structure on how to form those questions. Let me do that at this time. In order for us to form the questions, the first thing that we should include is an auxiliary have or has, as I mentioned, if we follow this rule, we learned that we're either going to use have if I talk about I, you, we, or they, and we use has whenever we talk about the third person. So in this case, um, we're going to use have, um, and then this follows the subject, then this follows the word ever, and then the verb in its past participle form, and then whatever complement that exists. So in this case, have you ever eaten snails? And by the way, um, this word here is a frequency adverb, so sometimes you can remove it, um, and um, the question will still be correct. But in this case, we want to use it. Have you ever eaten snails? Um, and what I mentioned was that you can either answer this question with a positive response, such as yes, I have, or this could be a negative response, such as no, I haven't. And so just so that we can see clearly what's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the colors at this time. All right, there we go. So have you ever eaten snails? And it's the same thing um, for our next question. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? So let's do that one as well. So I'm going to use have. This follows the subject. And then we're using the word ever. So we use the verb to be in this case in the past participle form and then whatever complement that exists so in this case have you ever been to a 
Vietnamese restaurant. And then once again, the answer to that particular question can be yes, I have or no, I haven't. And what I would like for you to notice now is how we respond to that kind of question, right? I mentioned that we can either have a positive response to that question, either yes, I have or no, I haven't. And then this next sentence, we're typically going to follow with a simple past statement. And the reason is because um, I'm going to talk about my experience in the past. So in this case, I'm going to say I tried them last month. So this statement here basically talks about that past experience that I had, which is related to this topic, right? So have you ever eaten snails? And my, my answer to that question is, yes, I have. I tried them last month. So I, I'm using the simple past. And um, now the next questions that you see there, which is what I mentioned earlier, are in the simple past. Did you like them? Now all of the questions are related to this event that you see here, right? It's no longer this question that you're answering. You're answering the next question. I tried them last month. So you want more information about this event from last month. Did you like them? And as you can see the answer, yes, I did. They were delicious. And we can see the same example towards the right side of this chart. Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Well, the answer to that question is no, I haven't. But I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. The next question that is asked here has to do with this answer. I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. Oh, did you go alone? Um, this question refers to the person going to that Thai restaurant last night. And he answers, no, I went with some friends. So as you can see, we use a combination of both the present perfect and the simple past to talk about things that you either started in the past, continue to the present, and then when you want to go into talking about a past experience, that's when we use the simple past. I ate at a time. Have you the... Okay, guys, so... Alright, so we have the structure here. It's the same structure that I explained to you before. Uh, this is for questions, okay? So, and like he said, when it comes to this, this word is an adverb, okay? This is a frequency adverb. So that is something that you can you can put it you can put it on, or you can just uh, remove it, and the and the question is going to be correct, okay? So you don't you don't need to put this, okay? You don't need to write it down, but if you want to use it, that that will be fine too, okay? So it's going to be have or has plus the subject. Uh, plus the past participle plus the complement, okay? And then the answer is going to be yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Okay, uh, then most likely the conversation will continue using the simple past, okay? So we have uh, here, uh, we are talking about that past experience that we had, okay? About We are talking about that situation that happened in the past. And after that, uh, people are going to ask about that situation here, okay? About that situation that happened in the past. Did you like them? Okay, and then we are going to answer uh, to that question, okay? Entonces, eh, lo que vamos a hacer es esto, guys. Bueno, a mí me gustaría preguntarles, hacerles alguna pregunta, a ver, y que ustedes me contesten utilizando Eh, esta dinámica de acá, ¿de acuerdo? Uh, so, for example, eh, eh, I would like to ask you guys, and anybody can answer to this, okay? So, have you ever tried uh, pupusas with salsa negra? ¿Alguno? ¿Alguien? No, al... I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, I haven't. No, I okay. haven't. Okay. Yes, I have. Yes, you have. Okay. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. <laughs> okay. Entonces, para los que ya las han probado, eh, uh, when was the last time that you guys uh, tried them?
Vamos a ver aquí a los que son de San Miguel. A ver, alguien por ahí que dijo que era de San Miguel. I am. Okay, Carlos. Okay, very good. So you said, Carlos, that you have tried pupusas with salsa negra, right? So. Yes. Okay. So when was the last time that you that you ate uh, pupusas with salsa negra? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, they were uh, delicious. Okay. Okay. Very good. So yes, if if I ask you, uh, did you like them? If I say, did you like them? Then you can answer, yes, I did. They were delicious. You can say that. Yes, I... mm -hmm. yes. Vamos a hacerlo. Vamos uh, a hacerlo otra vez. Yes. Fernando, le voy a hacer, le voy a hacer esta pregunta y usted me contesta de esta forma, de acuerdo? Y me dice, eh, por ejemplo, yes, I have. I tried them last month, por ejemplo. O usted me puede decir eh, que usted las probó, digamos, hace dos semanas o hace dos días, cuando usted guste. O sea, me lo puede decir en cualquier, eh, hablando acerca de cualquier momento, ¿de acuerdo? So, okay. all right, so here we go, Fernando. So if I say, uh, have you ever eaten pupusas with salsa negra? Yes, I have. I try in the pupusería pupusería sería así verdad mm -hmm. yes that's fine that's fine in the pupusería the last weekend last weekend okay so yes and usually guys when we want to say uh, last month last week we just say last month we don't say the last week or the last month okay so Just last last week, okay, Fernando? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can say, yes, I tried them in the pupuseria last week. Uh, yes, I tried them in pupuseria last week. Okay. And did you like them? Yes. Yes, I like it. Okay. Very good. So you can say, yes, I did. Yes, I did. So, yes, I did. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Fernando. Very good. Entonces, básicamente, eso es lo que tenemos que hacer. Ok, vamos a ir practicando para que nosotros eh, vayamos respondiendo de la forma correcta, ¿de acuerdo? Vamos a ir corrigiendo esos pequeños detalles que tenemos. Porque yo sé que ustedes, ustedes eh, sí se saben la estructura, pero a veces tenemos como pequeños eh, detallitos, ¿verdad? Que tenemos que ir mejorando. Entonces, no sé si nos queda claro esta parte hasta ahora, guys. Estamos hablando del presente perfecto y si ustedes se fijan es como esta la eh, como la ruta que va siguiendo la conversación, ¿verdad? Presente perfecto, luego el pasado simple y luego pues vamos a seguir hablando acerca de esa experiencia que tuvimos en el pasado. Eso es lo que estamos haciendo. Ok, entonces me gustaría que nosotros pensemos en este momento, que ya casi se nos acaba el tiempo, me gustaría que pensemos acerca de cosas eh, que hemos hecho. Por ejemplo, eh, yo he estudiado inglés por tres años. Por ejemplo, un ejemplo nada más. Y que nosotros lo notemos y lo hagamos eh, en, el, en inglés utilizando el presente perfecto, ¿de acuerdo? Anotemos al menos unas cuatro oraciones acerca de eso. Solamente para finalizar, guys. Hagamos eso, por favor. De acuerdo, pensemos en ese tipo de cosas. Yo he, eh, digamos, yo he trabajado en el mismo lugar por dos años. O yo he estado casado por cinco años, por ejemplo. Se las se la voy a anotar yo por acá algunos ejemplos para que los tengamos ahí presentes. Permítame un instante, lo voy a hacer por acá. Ok, vamos a ver. Vaya, entonces vamos a hacer aquí algunos ejemplos. So, I have been married for five years. Ok, yo he estado casado por cinco años. 
I have worked for the same company for two years. Eh, eso es, he trabajado para la misma compañía por dos años. O podemos decir, I have lived in the same address for uh, or since 2002. Solamente por ejemplo, ¿verdad? Eh, yo he vivido en la misma dirección desde el 2002. Ok, si tenemos más ejemplos. Acerca de cosas que nosotros hemos hecho. Desde el pasado hasta este punto, por ejemplo. Ok. No sé si nos queda claro por ahorita, guys. Eh, por favor, anotemos las oraciones, ¿de acuerdo? Y si tienen una duda, por favor, háganmelo saber. Si ustedes tienen una algo que se les venga a la mente, que tal vez no sepan cómo estructurarlo, solamente ustedes me lo pueden hacer saber a mí, ¿ok? Okay, Vaya, ahí si sí pueden, cuando ya las tengan, vamos a compartirlas por el chat. O si ustedes las quieren decir eh, para la clase, también está bien. Teacher. Y si, por ejemplo, pusiéramos, yo he estudiado hace dos años, ¿cómo sería? Yo he estudiado hace dos años. Uh -huh. eh, bueno, en ese caso creo que lo más correcto sería, eh, yo he estudiado por dos años. Ok, so I have... Ah, for two years. For... Two years. I have studied for two years. Okay. Yes, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, Byron. Okay, very good. So Alicia says, I have had my cell phone for three years. Okay, very good. And Fernando says, I have studied English for one year. Okay, en ese caso, Fernando, eh, si es solamente por un año, sería sin la letra S al final, okay? Yeah, I have studied English for one year only. Okay, Marisela dice, I have been played the piano for five years. Lo vamos a pasar por acá. Lo vamos a anotar en las que tenemos aquí. Vaya, en este caso, en este caso, Marisela, si usted quiere decir que usted ha tocado el piano eh, por cinco años, bueno, creo que lo mejor, y esta es otra cosa, eh, acá nosotros tenemos con respecto al presente perfecto, hay dos formas, tenemos la que acabamos de aprender, que es la forma como simple, y tenemos por otra parte la forma continua, ¿de acuerdo? La forma continua es eh, cuando utilizamos I have been, y luego de eso nosotros utilizamos un verbo, en presente continuo, que sería, I have been playing the piano for five years, ok, esta es una forma continua, en la cual nosotros estamos diciendo que es algo que empezó en el pasado, eh, todavía está sucediendo en el presente, y en este momento todavía se está llevando a cabo, de acuerdo, por eso eh, no es lo que estamos viendo ahorita, nosotros ahorita solamente estamos viendo esta forma base, ¿verdad? Que es el sujeto, el verbo auxiliar y el verbo en pasado. Entonces, eh, para lo que quiere decir, por ejemplo, Marisela, pudiera ser, I have played, I have played the piano for five years. ¿Ok? Ok, tenemos por acá el ejemplo de Joel. Ok, Alicia dice, I have worked in human resources for 10 years. I have been studying graphic design for five years. Ok, very good, Patricia. Y tenemos aquí el ejemplo de Joel que dice, I have been married almost five years. And I have been living in the same city for nine years. I have been studying English for two years. Muy bien, muy bien. Muchas gracias, Joel. Vamos a ver. 
my house for 14 years. Have lived in the same place for five years. Okay. Eh, luego Christian eh, nos comparte, dice, I have been uh, a guitarist for uh, seven years. Okay. Bueno, en el caso de esta Christian, yo lo, lo diría de otra forma. Okay. Está bien por acá la estructura. O sea, está diciendo yo he sido. Pero normalmente eh, guitarrista creo que sería mejor como guitar player. Ok. Y acá, si estamos hablando de siete años, nosotros no vamos a decir A. Ok. Porque A es cuando es uno. Entonces sería I have been a guitar player for seven years. O I have played the guitar. Hay como otras formas para decirlo, ¿verdad? I have played the guitar for seven years. Ok, teacher. ¿Mm? Thank you. You're welcome. Así que esas serían como otras formas para decirlo. Vamos a ver, aquí tenemos a Jacqueline. Dice, I have studied marketing for six years. My parents have... Ok. Eh, para el segundo ejemplo, Jacqueline, eh, si usted quiere decir que sus padres han estado casados, en ese caso tiene que agregar have been, ok so my parents have been married for 28 years I haven't eaten sushi I have washed clothes all day, very good ok, las otras están bien, muy bien Jacqueline Christian prays for a long time I have watched dragons of house ok, muy bien Alicia, creo que aquí era I have watched House of Dragons on Netflix or Dragons of House. Okay, maybe it is a, it is a different uh, TV show. Okay, bueno. Muy bien, muchas gracias guys por todos sus aportes. Eh, muchas gracias de verdad. Porque nos ayudan a, a poder ver qué áreas tenemos que ir mejorando, ¿verdad? Entonces, por ahora lo vamos a dejar así. Eh, no se preocupen que el día de mañana nosotros vamos a continuar. Eh, mañana sí vamos a practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Vamos a tener el espacio ahí para que ustedes eh, puedan practicar en grupos como siempre lo hacemos. Así que, bueno, guys, lo vamos a dejar por acá el día de ahora. And I will see you guys uh, tomorrow, ¿ok? So I hope you guys have a great evening. And I will see you tomorrow, guys. Bye, bye. See you. Bye, teacher. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye, bye. Have a good night. Bye.